Hey guys, welcome back. One of the most common questions I get these days is who makes the best reproduction M1938 tanker helmet? Well, today I'm going to give you my answer to that question as well as show you two of my own original tanker helmets in my collection for comparison. So, let's get started. First of all, here's some background information on the M1938 tanker helmet. Here are the four main manufacturers of these helmets during World War II. In my collection, I have original examples from two of these four manufacturing companies, including over here, a Rawlings Manufacturing Company in size 7, which is unfortunately too small for my very large watermelon head, but that's why we have reproductions. And this particular example has very, very nice paint still on it. Um, it appears very lightly used. Um, there is some scuffs and light dings on the paint, but the leather inside appears almost unused and untreated. And this particular helmet also came exactly as you see it to me, with original Polaroid 1021 goggles, as well as the extra lenses and the um, carrying, uh, what is, it? is it a pouch, I guess you would call it, with all the extra lenses uh, for the goggles. And it also came with an original HS18 headset already installed in it, as you can see. Very, very nice setup for any tanker collection, so I'm very happy to have this. And I also have a Wilson Athletic Goods size 7 and 3 eighths, a very big 7 and 3 eighths that actually somehow fits my big watermelon head. Of course, I'm not going to use this for any reenacting events anytime soon, because wearing original tanker helmets is just uh, downright stupid, in my opinion, because you're very likely to destroy them. But anyways, that is my Wilson Athletic Goods um, original helmet. As you can see, it does appear a lot more worn and um, probably did see use during World War II or even afterwards as these helmets were used up even into the 60s by American tankers, as well as being exported to other countries um, after World War II. Now my two reproduction examples, right here with the What Price Glory M1938 Resist All goggles on. Go check out my review of these goggles. They're very nice reproductions. They're actually uh, on sale right now, I believe. So go check that video out. This is a What Price Glory M1938 tanker helmet as well. Um, at the front sells the exact same helmet um, as well. I believe it's the same price, too. Um, so that's one of the helmets we'll be reviewing today. And above it, up here on these 75mm shells, is my reproduction from Quartermaster Inspector of Belgium. We're going to be comparing and contrasting the What Price Glory slash at the front tanker helmet to the Rawlings tanker helmet. Why, you may ask? Well, the answer to this question will be pretty apparent in just a few minutes once we take a look at the inside of these helmets. What is one glaringly obvious thing that you notice almost immediately about these two helmets right now? Well, if it's that glare coming off of the helmet on the right, that's the same thing I was thinking. See that glare coming off of that paint? Yep. You don't see that on the original. Now, the color of the paint is pretty close to the original. 
I'll give them that. But it really should be a flat OD green, just like pretty much every other paint that the U.S. military used during World War II. It shouldn't have a reflection like that, so that's going to be a pretty significant minus for what price glory. Another thing about paint, uh, take a look at this leather piece right here on the ear, ear flap. Now, on the original, the paint is almost identical to what's on the rest of the helmet. But on the reproduction, this this paint doesn't doesn't really match up with the rest of the paint like at all. And in fact, that almost looks like the wrong color to me. Um, but yeah, that's two kind of obvious paint issues already with the What Price Glory helmet back of the helmets. Original on the left. Reproduction on the right. I'm noticing that glare off the paint again. Now these little flaps back here, they're designed to hold your wire for your headset, as well as hold the strap for your goggles on the back of your helmet. And they are exactly where they should be on this helmet. We have all the snaps, all the rivets where they should be. Keep in mind there are a little bit of structural differences, I guess you could say, in these two helmets because this original is a size 7 and the reproduction is about a size 7.5. So scale might be a little bit skewed or a little bit off um, between the two of them. Of course, with a bigger helmet, some things will be bigger and some things will be little slightly uh, differently positioned, I guess you could say, in some areas. Um, the only one bad thing I noticed about the back of the reproduction from what price glory and at the front here, if you notice down here where the elastic straps come out of the back of the helmet, the paint is actually chipping off back here. Um, in fact, some of the plastic uh, fiberglass is actually kind of chipping out too. Um, if you look at the original, that's that's not happening, so it's not a uh, period correct flaw. Um, but otherwise, looks fine. Moving on to the, these are called arms. They're designed to hold your headset in place when you're wearing the helmet. Looks pretty good to me. And then the ear flaps themselves. Looks fine to me. The uh, elastic straps look fine to me. On top, we'll, uh, I guess we'll make sure the holes in the top of the helmet are uh, correctly sized. As you can see, the diameter of the holes on the original is about three quarters of an inch. Let's take a look over here. Where are we at? Okay. And about three quarters of an inch. We're good. Just backpedaling to the ear flaps quickly. I noticed this. On the original, you have two uh, snaps facing down towards the flap open and then you have one open facing away from the flap at the back the, the third one now on the reproduction all three are facing the same way on each side so that is one slight difference and uh, we'll look at the other side of each as well just for proof yep so that is one one more uh, small mistake. And I guess we'll take a look inside now. If you recall from earlier, I specifically mentioned that I chose to compare these two tanker helmets for a reason, and the other two tanker helmets for a reason as well. That reason is, this original is a Rawlings, like I said, in size 7. And this uh, What Price Glory reproduction 
is also stamped as a Rawlings as well. Now, of course, these helmets aren't made by Rawlings, but they are made to look like they are. Uh, hopefully, somehow you can see the stamping on the leather here. It's it's right there. It's, it says Rawlings. But for some reason, they don't um, stamp these in ink. Um, they just stamp them in the leather. So, not quite uh, as accurate as they should be, I guess. Um, but it is uh, made to be... Um, these, these helmets appear to be based off of the original Rawlings versions of these helmets. Now, uh, we'll go back to the original and show you what it's supposed to look like. There you go. You can also see the rest of the leather. This helmet, like I said, it appears very, very lightly used, if at all. Very nice. Very, very nice piece. And then back to the reproduction again. Yeah, that rolling stamp is, it is there. It's just very hard to see in this lighting. And here's one last shot of the two helmets together with uh, a pair of Polaroid 1021 goggles on each of them. And one last thing I want to say is if you notice, this green lining that goes all the way around the outside of the helmet on the original is very thin. On the reproduction, it's very, very thick. It's probably twice as wide. And if you notice, other parts of the helmet are scaled up in size or thicker, I guess you could say. So, as, as to whether that could be just because the helmet itself is a bigger size or it's just a manufacturing thing I really can't say but it is kind of a kind of a problem to me now for my final grade of the at the front and what price glory m1938 tanker helmet I would give this particular helmet about uh, a C plus or a B minus really isn't the best reproduction out there that I've seen um, but it would definitely do the job, um, from 10 feet away. It really, it really doesn't look much different than this original, but I don't know. There's some things about it that just quite aren't that right. Like the paint, um, the paint on this piece of leather here, as we talked about. Um, yeah, there's a lot of little things that kind of add up. Um, the construction of it just doesn't quite sit right with me compared to the originals. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably give it about a 7. A solid 7, I guess. Um, it, I wouldn't really complain if you uh, bought one of these for your tanker impression, but I think um, you could do better. Um, so I guess we'll move on to the next reproduction helmet. Now we are looking at the Quartermaster Inspector reproduction on the left, and we have the original Wilson Athletic Goods on the right. Taking a look at the paint on these helmets, you'll notice that on the original Wilson helmet, the paint is pretty significantly darker than on the QMI helmet. However, if we bring the original Rawlings helmet back into the picture here. You'll notice that the paint on the QMI helmet is very, very close to the paint on the original Rawlings helmets. So perhaps the um, company used the paint color of the Rawlings helmets rather than this color on the uh, Wilson helmet. And of course, certain helmets could have been repainted in the 75-odd uh, years since World War II as well. I've had this reproduction for probably close to, if not more than three years now. So, you'll notice quite a bit of scuffs, um, marks, scrapes, um, including 
unfortunately, some friction tape. Ripped a little bit of paint off of the top of this helmet. I put the friction tape over the ventilation holes in this helmet because there is some photos in existence of tankers with friction tape as well as white medical tape over top of their ventilation holes. Why you would do this, I mean, I guess you'd want to try to keep what little heat you can generate from wearing this helmet inside when it's cold out. Um, maybe trying to avoid getting water or rain inside of the helmet. Um, taped over ventilation holes on tanker helmets in World War II reenacting is very, very overrepresented, in my opinion, at this point. Almost every event where there's people with armored vehicles and tanker helmets I see at least one at least one person wearing a tanker helmet with friction tape or something over their ventilation holes and in reality I only have three maybe four total original photos of this being done during World War II in my 1000 plus photo reference album on Facebook thus it is quite overrepresented even though, of course, this original here, you can clearly see at some point there was some sort of tape over the ventilation holes. Whether this was during World War II or afterwards, it's really hard to say. Taking a look at the back of the helmets. Reproduction on the left, original on the right. Rivets and snaps where they should be. Very good. Elastic straps coming out where they should be. No chipping paint like on the other reproduction. Very good. My one complaint about the back of this helmet is these leather straps coming down. They don't come directly straight down like the originals do. As you can see, they're a little bit of an angle for some reason. I don't know why that is. And also, the ventilation holes appear to be shifted further down than on the original. And keep in mind, there really shouldn't be any sort of size or scale difference between these two helmets because these are both size 7 and 3 eighths. The right hand side. Everything where it should be, arms where they should be. I just have these two elastic straps inverted on their respective helmets. They do have the correct amount of snaps and where they should be. Now on the ear flap of this original, it appears there isn't really any paint right, right along here and surrounding where this is sewn into the leather. From the reproduction, for some reason they have it painted. Let's also take a look at the original Rawlings and see how that one looks. Okay, so it is painted right there, but it does appear to be a little bit lighter than the rest of the paint on the helmet. This might have been painted, it's just, it might have kind of faded away over time, hard to say. But, uh, not a huge deal, I guess. And of course, we will measure the diameter of the ventilation holes. Okay, let's go with 
front right. Okay, so that is approximately, what would that be, half, half an inch? No, five, that'd be five eighths. Correct, five eighths? Yeah, we'll go with five eighths. Now, the original, the original is the same size as the Rawlings helmets ventilation holes, which would be three quarters of an inch. So these ventilation holes are just slightly smaller than they should be on the QMI helmet. Now, I've actually considered taking a drill press and drilling these holes out to three quarters of an inch, the correct size, just a matter of finding someone with a drill press they'd let me use for this. I guess, I suppose you could do it with a regular drill, but I'm not sure how well that would work out. You might end up with some kind of skewed holes. Um, so I'd rather use a drill press. But in the grand scheme of things, you really can't tell from 10 feet away that these holes are just an eighth of an inch too, too small. Not that big of a deal. And then I guess we'll look at the front again. Now you'll notice there is two lines of stitching. Two lines of stitching on the original, as it should be. Here we have the inside of the original Wilson Athletic Goods helmet. As you can see, size 7 and 3 eighths. Wilson, Chicago, Illinois. If we can get some better lighting. There you go. I also just realized right right there, I believe that's an original laundry number for the soldier that this tanker helmet belonged to. What I find particularly interesting about that tanker helmet having a laundry number inside of it is the fact that Laundry numbers would typically be put in personal items belonging to a soldier, but the thing is, tanker helmets were not issued, to my knowledge, to individual GIs. They would be issued to individual tanks. Thus, my understanding is every tank would have one tanker helmet of every standard size. So basically you would have a six and seven eighths, a seven, a seven and a quarter, seven and a half. This includes armored cars, tank destroyers, tanks, light tanks, medium tanks, basically everything from the M8 armored car, the M20 armored car, the M3 light tank, the M3A1 light tank, the M3A3 light tank, the M5 light tank, the M5A1 light tank, the M3 medium tank, the M4 medium tanks of all series and all variants, that would be the Sherman, everything from M4 all the way to M4A3E8, and of course the M24 Chaffee, the M26 Pershing, and let's not forget the tank destroyers like the M10 GMC, the M36 GMC, and the M18 GMC as well. Anyway, sorry for that brief tangent. Here is the inside of the QMI tanker helmet. And we'll hold it up against the original. There you go. Looks pretty good to me. One last look at both tanker helmets with goggles on them.
going to do one last test here before we wrap things up. Now, Tanger helmets were designed so that you could actually wear an M1 helmet steel pot over top of them. Now, we're going to test to see if these reproductions will allow you to do just that. And to test this, I have an original front seam fixed bail M1 helmet here to perform this test. So, here we go. And there you have it. The QMI helmet passes the M1 helmet test. And here you have the original with an original front seam swivel bail helmet over top of it. There's a model for how this should look. Looks pretty good to me. My only word of warning about this will be you should probably take your HS18 headset out of your tanker helmet before you try doing this, just to be safe the first time. Now, if you do have a head that's about seven and a quarter or smaller, you can do this with your headset inside of your tanker helmet. It just might be very, very tight on your head. Um, I have a, at least a size seven and a half head, so this can this is very very tight on me when I do this um, basically the M1 helmet constricts the size of the tanker helmet and thus squishes your head so if you have a head larger than a size seven and a quarter I don't really recommend doing this however it is a very very unique cool look for a tanker and there is a decent amount of evidence of this being done during World War II as these M1 helmets were designed to be used this way, if you so choose to do so. So like I said, just proceed with caution if you do decide to do this. And now we have the What Price Glory slash at the front tanker helmet with an M1 original fixed bail M1 helmet over top of it. Now this doesn't, to me, doesn't quite look right as the M1 helmet sits a bit high on the tanker helmet and this is also part of where the large we'll call it large construction of this helmet plays a plays a factor in um, I guess we'll say authenticity as you can see on the original the M1 helmet covers up large majority of the tanker helmet now with this reproduction a majority of it is sticking out and it, just does, it does, doesn't quite look right to me in my opinion so although we did get the m1 helmet over top of this reproduction i i don't know if i can really give this tanker helmet a passing grade for this this particular test so just be mindful of that as well when you're ordering a tanker helmet. The final grade for the Quartermaster Inspector QMI reproduction M1938 tanker helmets. So as with anything, there are a few minor issues I have with this helmet. However, they are very, very minuscule and not that big of a deal. Um, there's also a lot fewer than there are issues with the QMI and at the front reproduction right here. So, for me, I would give the QMI helmet about a 9, 9.5 out of 10, or an A-. minus. So, in conclusion, I would definitely... Definitely recommend the Quartermaster Inspector M1938 Tanker Helmets over the At The Front and What Price Glory reproduction. However, this is certainly not the worst reproduction out there. There are some really, really bad reproductions on eBay. 
right now as well. I will post a screenshot of one of those in this video. Because there are some pretty obvious, really, really bad issues with um, the one tanker helmet I've seen for sale on eBay. So, if you're doing World War II tanker things, you're definitely going to want to get either one of these. And I would definitely recommend the QMI over the At The Front and What Price Glory version. Although I do know they were out of stock last time I looked at their website. So, of course, if you if you find one of these for a cheap cheap price, fine, pick it up. I mean, you could certainly do worse. Um, avoid the listing on eBay that I'll post in here. Also, avoid the IMA International Military Antiques reproduction tanker helmet as well. That that one is not very good either. So, anyways, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's anything more you'd like me to review. So if you made it this far into this video, thank you very, very much for watching and listening to me talk for half an hour. So, all right, comment, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Hit the notification bell down below for notifications of when I post things and all that. Uh, follow me on Instagram, at Timberwolf Rifleman. And that should just about cover it. So thanks again for watching, guys. Take care.